Hello everyone, it's Old Guardian here. In this how to play video, I'm going to take a look at Secret Hunter. While Death Rattle Hunter is generally considered to be the best deck right now in the game, Secret Hunter offers a bit of a different, bit of a faster, less value type of hunter deck to play. And actually, one of the best features of Secret Hunter is that it is favored against Death Rattle Hunter. The old truth about faster hunter deck being the favorite in the Hunter Mirrors still holds true. And if you're facing a lot of Death Rattle Hunters, then you might choose a secret hunter to overcome them. Although if you really really hate that rattle hunter, Odd Paladin is actually the way to go. Regardless, this is a hunter archetype for someone who wants something a bit more faster, for someone who really wants to hit kill command in the face. The definitive card of this deck is the Lesser Emerald Spellstone. Spellstone is by far the highest win rate card in the entire deck, it's very much comparable to Prince Kelaset in that regard. You always keep Spellstone in your mulligan, always. It's the prime card that you want, it's the card that wins you the most games. Everything else is serving that purpose. So you have some one drops, some of them are secret keepers. So if you can have secret keeper into some secrets, that can give you a good start. Alternatively, if you can have Diamol into Crackling Razor that can give you a good start. So there are a couple of different ways to get a good start with this deck. Then there's the secret package. Secret package can vary, so do think about what you need and how you need to change this in order to beat whatever meta you're facing. I would lately have been using Explosive Trap, Freezing, Snipe, Double Venom Strike, Double Wandering. Some people are also putting in one Rat Trap. Double Explosive Trap isn't necessarily a bad idea either if you're facing a lot of Paladin. There are many ways to go around with the secret package. The deck has some powerful tree drops, there's Animal Companion, Bear Shark, and there's also Eagle Horn Bows. And in this deck, Eagle Horn Bow, because there's a lot of secrets, you really want to think about how you use your bow. Because whenever you get the opponent to proc a secret, you're going to get one more durability to the bow. So sometimes you want to hold on to the bow and not let it go down to one charge, so that you have one charge available to use. Then again, if you have reason to suspect that the opponent is going to have weapon removal, then you don't want to save the bow, because you want to get some immediate effect of it. And then you might not even want to play the bow, until you can get a good immediate effect from it. If everything is going nicely along the curve, then on 4 there are again some powerful plays for this deck, because Houndmaster, Houndmaster into Bear Shark is my favorite thing to do against Druid. It's incredibly powerful. But Houndmaster into any of the animal companies is still pretty good. So there are lots of things to do there. And Houndmaster Shaw, 3-6 stat line for 4 mana, is quite powerful. And because it gives all of your other minions rush, that means that if you can play Shaw and the opponent can't remove it, and then you can play Spellstone afterwards, then that means that you're going to get a bunch of 3-3 rush beasts on the board. Finally, at the top of the curve, there is Subject 9, draw 5 different secrets from your deck. So this is your refill card. If you're running out of steam, Subject 9, suddenly you're going to make a big Christmas tree and you're back in the game. Same can also be said about Deathstuck Rexa. Deathstuck Rexa can turn this aggro deck suddenly into a value deck. And that can really make a difference in slow matchups. It can also be useful against something like a Paladin, where the AoE effect of Deathstuck Rexa might be at least as important as the ability to create beasts. And finally there is a Mossy Horror. Mossy Horror, even though there's no Geekling Inventor in the meta anymore, Mossy Horror can be useful against Paladin, and it can also be useful against Druid. Getting rid of those spreading plagues and being able to push more face damage is just the way to go. Secret Hunter, in principle, it has it all. I mean, if you can get a really solid curve from here, that's going to be so, so sweet. But already at the start, Secret Keeper synergizes with Secrets, but not with Razormo. Dialmore synergizes with Razormo, but not with Secrets. So, there's already some questions to be asked here, whether you're able to find that perfect curve. So overall, I feel that this deck is a little bit draw-dependent, and it's also pretty careful to tailor specifically for your metagame. Because there are a number of flex slots. Basically all the secrets can be switched around. There's 
rat trap that's not being used here, the snake trap that's not being used here. Some of these could be in two copies. Also Mossy Horror is a tech card. So there is some room to tech this deck for your specific meta. And right now there seems to be quite a lot of variety in the end, so it's pretty difficult to get it exactly right. This particular build that I have here, I enjoy playing this against Deathrattle Hunter, I think that's a fine matchup. I'm okay with this against Druid, I think that's okay. I've tried to mitigate some of the weaknesses against Paladin a little bit, but Paladin is still not that great. And it can also be pretty difficult to beat something like even Shaman or Zulok. So it's a deck that has clear strengths, it's a deck that has clear weaknesses, and it's also a deck that can be tailored for a meta, if you just have a very good idea of what the meta is. As for mulligans with this deck, as I already mentioned, Spellstone, Spellstone, Spellstone. That is so very, very good. Other than Spellstone, you're generally looking for synergies, so if you can find Secret Keeper and a Secret, if you can find Die Mall and Raise a Mall, those sort of things. And your tree drops are typically pretty good keeps, Animal Companion, Bear Shark. Except against something like a Paladin or even Shaman where you really need to find that one drop. And against Warrior, I would try to look for Deathstalk or Exa. And if I find Deathstalk or Exa, then I go for a value game and don't draw at all, for example. And with this deck you probably never keep tracking in the mulligan. Tracking in this deck is at its best when you use that later in the game, trying to dig for some kind of like a kill command to go for lethal. As always, I've prepared a bunch of gameplay material of this deck for you. When I played this deck, I first started off with a big losing streak, and then I had pretty decent win streak, so I climbed back to where I started. It can be pretty streaky. But here are some examples of what it looks like in action. Fine. We ditch these. And we keep Secret Creeper and the trap. What kind of rogue? So this one is something like a miracle. Obviously if I just play the Secret Keeper out there it will simply die. Which means that I'm not going to play anything on one. I'm going to play Secret Keeper coin Secret on two. That is an unfortunately strong hand. I'll go with Secret Keeper, coin... I think it's coin... Is it when I'm strike It's Wandering Monster. Let's coin the monster out there. That guarantees us one hit is not connecting to my face. And there's even a pretty decent chance that the hit that is not connecting to my face could be the 5-2. Now he might just choose not to attack. Perfectly valid line. Next turn he gets to proc his death rattle minion. So what I need here is the Venom Strike, right? But he attacks, he can kill the Venom Strike with the Necrium Blade. This is tricky. So I could play the bow. I could potentially kill the one, two, for example. And I will get more charges if he attacks. Or I could play Animal Companion. But if I get like Leo, he gets a good trade on it. I think it's the bow when I kill the one too. Let's try this approach. Now I told him that it's not explosive trap, but it could still be freezing trap. He can play the egg here, or he could play the blight nozzle. That's also possible. Blight nozzle puts him in a bit better position. I think I need to do just this here and wait a little while longer. Let's see what happens next. But if he vials the Blight Nozzle and creates a bunch of those 1-1 one, one poisonous minions, then that's going to be very difficult for me to answer. Okay, let's get a good Wandering Monster out there. That is a good Wandering Monster. Excellent news. I can obviously take all of this down, but... Alright, how does he choose to do it? Cube is kind of nice. Yeah, 
cube is pretty nice indeed. That's a that's a big board. Well, he had perfect cards too. And Huffer isn't helping. Am I just dead? I suppose I'm pretty close to being just dead here. I kind of need to race, but I don't think I really am really able to do that one either. Well, that was five damage that didn't go to my face, which gives me some more opportunities to race. Because while there are plenty of minions here, they are not very they are not very big minions. So if I push five, put him down to twelve. I don't see how I deal that twelve. I need to track him to something, I guess. Can he kill all the can he kill all the four beasts? Possibly. Possibly he can. And with the boys, all the boys and the minions, he can of course kill a bear shark and everything too. I'm thinking whether kill, activating kill command next turn is useful. We'll see. This is this is the beasts and push face damage. Will be difficult to get that 14 in. And he of course only is five, so if he has Leroy in hand, he wins right here, obviously. But the probability of him having Leroy is not that great. These don't line up very well. Now he can he can equip the dagger. And he he can equip the dagger so he can proc a random death rattle, which most likely gives him one 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 with rush. But I'm not dead this turn. I'm probably dead next turn. I have a two mana beast here, so I could top deck another kill command. That's not going to be enough. Does he have the Necroom Vial in hand? Oh, Ziliax. Oh boy. That was perfect. Well, he had perfect cards, as I said. Yeah, there's no way for me to pass that. Alright. Let's see. Facing a rogue. I have a secret. I have a spell stone. I don't have a coin. And I don't have a one drop. So. This can be tough. Rogue kept two cards. Darmore doesn't even die to an explosive trap. No, well, nothing he has dies to an explosive trap. I think I still need to play it. Need to start getting those buffs up. Let's say he coins a fledgling. I can kill it with the kill command. Then I can play Shaw and then I can play Spellstone. So that still works out nicely. Of course it's very unlikely that he would ever do such a thing. He, he kept multiple cards so I assume there's going to be some good stuff coming. I'll have to do more kill command on his tug next turn. He placed the tug here. He has so many. Oh, but there's a tar creeper. That was a surprise. He could coin fungal mancer on this tar creeper though. Coin fungal mancer would be such a gigantic problem for me. Because how am I going to get through a 4 7 tar creeper? I might still be able to do it. I think I want to play a minion here. I think I'll do it like this. This still leaves me with the four wolves. And there's a Venom Strike Trap. So if he plays the Fungal Mancer and if he attacks, that would mean that he cannot kill the... He could still kill the Poisonous Minion if he attacks with this one into here first. Then if it's a Venom Strike Trap, he could kill that with the Daimol and the Dagger. So no fungal mancer. Mm, just a wild spice layer. 
Wasp's Slayer can also be a problem if there's one on us next turn, of course. I still think I need the I still think I need the wolves. Now let's hope he doesn't have a fungal mancer here, because that's that's really a big problem. Uh the Wisman this deck overall is not working at all for me, so hard to say. But I don't think any of the cards haven't been working, so it hasn't there hasn't really been any difference with whatever cards I have here. Well, that bow is an interesting one. So is Ra so is Razor Maw and Shaw type of play. I think I might try that. If I can find like plus three attack or something here, plus one, plus one. Death Rattle summon two plants. Summon two plants works out right with the Shaw. I think we're going for that line here. And this one goes there. The plants can kill that one. No, this one. I did this wrong, right? I could have saved one one. Oh well. Trade, trade in one. Yeah, I could have saved one one here. I did it slightly incorrectly. But still, it's a sure. You kind of want to answer a show. Can you answer a show? And this time the answer is yes, you can answer a show. Answering show is nice. Still has plenty of resources left. I need to bow down this fellow. I think I want to use a hero power here instead of the Houndmaster. There might be more value left in the Houndmaster, especially with the Wild Spine Slayer gone. Pretty surprising that he runs a double tar creeper list, but. We'll see. Now, if there's no fungal mancer, oh, there is going to be a fungal mancer. That's sad because if there was no fungal mancer, the mossy horror would have done a lot of work. That's sad. So did I just lose this one? Not sure. Can I raise? I need a couple of points of damage from somewhere. I might be able to raise this. If I can top deck an animal companion, if I can get some good secrets going, there are still ways for me to try to raise this one. But I do need a beast. I have another bow left in the deck. Is bow attack to the face correct here? Yeah, I think it is. There's still a chance that I can raise this. Still a small chance for that. Depends how many turns it's going to take him to kill me. Okay, Diamond top deck or Crackling Razor Mall top deck wins right now. He's setting up for lethal in case I don't have those. Bearshack top deck also wins. Alright, let's do this. I might try Wandering most to show. He's never going to attack me in the face, though. After I develop a secret. At least it's very unlikely. But we'll see. No Spellstone. He kept two cards. One of them was a Wild Growth. Oh, that Secret Keeper, though. Is it worth coining out? I think it is. Secret Keeper, Coin Wandering Monster. Because now he also has to wonder whether he can. what he can really do. Obviously, a damage spell would deal with this very nicely. But if it's not a damage spell, then he has to wonder okay, can I attack Face? Can I attack the minion? What can I really do? Too bad this is not poisonous to him. It would be nice if it was. Oh well, it's going face. This one's going face. We're developing the bear shark. What is there not to like? So far, so good. 
This kind of druid deck runs Spreading Plague for sure. That can be an issue. He's digging for that Spreading Plague right now. Mm, could also have a Spell Stone because he armored up so that he can get more damage. I feel like my arena luck is just bad. Oh. It could be that it is just bad. I'm mean, gonna have the option to hound Master the Cobra. Play around swipe a little bit. Interesting decisions. Or I can hound Master the Bear Shark. If he wants to get his tweak working, then he will have to eat into the Bear Shark, but he, then he can swipe away the Cobra. I think the Bear Shark is overall still the better target. Because now if, if you want to if you want to get somewhere with your twig, you're going to have to punch your face into this six attack minion. An opposing warrior pulls a boom ship out of Arcane Dynamo, then use it to face for Heaven Storm Watcher. Uh, no, it doesn't happen only to you, it does happen actually to lots of people. So in that sense, you are incorrect. That's 8 damage. Need another 11 somewhere. Does he have weapon removal? Unlikely. I think I'm going in with the bow here. On the hero power. This sets up potential lethal with the kill command. Like even if he has taunts, if he can't deal with the bear shark, I can just kill command hero power him. Unless he has exactly Malfurion. Well, that's not a taunt, but it's still armor. But this is still looking good. This is looking lethal levels good. Hard must kind of could be, but I would really need a secret. I think I'll try with this keep. Taraknik, hey, I subbed to you on YouTube the other day. Thanks, I appreciate that. Yeah, it's a dire mole opener. Okay. Hunt the cap two cards. I don't know what kind of hunter this. Okay, looks like a death rattle hunter to me. Kelasid is obviously pretty sweet. If I raise a more. So raise a more is an option, and then there are mind games with the wandering monster and the venom strike trap. Interesting. I think it is a Venom Strike Trap play, to be honest. Instead of Razor more against this board. Let's see if he wants to attack into the mole. He also might not attack anywhere. Yeah, that's a good choice. So this is definitely a deck that runs Mind Control tech. I don't have good tools to play around that. If I spend the coin this turn... And that doesn't do a whole lot. Next turn, I, because next turn I could coin the spell stone. I think I'm going for a coin spell stone next turn. Let's try this approach. Then I try to go wide and spank him before he gets to do much. That's the goal. Let's see what's the reality. That is obviously a scary fellow. But oh, don't do that. Now you just condemned your shore to die. Why would you do that? That seems like such a bad idea. Okay, we're killing the shore. Shore is too scary. The real question is, am I killing the kill asset? I don't see any real reason to kill the kill asset. We can chip in that one damage. I'm vulnerable to... I'm vulnerable to mind control tech anyway. So if he wants to guarantee your 3 3 steal with the mind control deck, he will have to do the trade for me. Otherwise he might end up stealing a 1-1. One, one, which isn't something he likes to do. Ah, oh, well, this move. Mm, I still don't know if that's any good. Okay, then we're going for Razor Mole here. Ah, oh, that's pretty terrible. Because we need to do just this. I'm obviously pushing face here. I have no interest in 
trading into his small things. And I could do an abstract trap. And tracking. I think I actually need to kill the tree tree. He could have the bear. No, he has the ooze. Re really sad when they have that one. It's a five, five, two. This is just two walls. Let's check to see if I can find something useful. Another bow. Another bow is useful. Is it more useful than a subject 9? Explosive freezing snipe. It's probably more useful. I'll play the bear shark. And I'll play the trap. I'll trade into the 4 1 and these two are going face. Okay. So I have the wandering monster, I have the venom strike trap. If he chooses to trade in some of these, then he would better have a flanking strike available as well. He has a flanking strike, but he chooses to use that first. This means that he has a mind control tech, right? Yeah, double mind control tech was pretty powerful in this particular game, I, s I would say. That really got a lot of work done. Yeah, double mind control deck. Powerful, powerful play. Probably have to kill the 5 1 here. Then I'm going to summon 3 wolves, right? He can wipe my entire board. That's sad. I still need to get the wolves out there. But I need to try to push some face damage. He can. Trade the entire board and he still have way 4-1 left over. And he can also have a Katrina. If it pulls the taunt, he is so golden here. It pulls the taunt. That's I think that's pretty sad. Him having two mind control techs and the ooze. And everything possible in this world was quite useful. I can't get rid of the the real problem is that I can't get rid of the can't get rid of the grizzly. So what would need to happen for me to win this game? That's pretty tricky. If he stopped top decking so well all the time, that would be useful. Other than that, I don't see a way right now. Yeah, unfortunately there are no outs. Let's see if I can do it on the second attempt. We're again keeping just the diamond because I want to get on the board on one. Now there's also a secret keeper, but if, so if I can find a secret that would be nice. Let's see. So I know he's running a double MC tech list. And he kept two cards, so he has a pretty good hand again. I have no secrets available right now. So I think I open with the Diamol, because Diamol doesn't immediately die to a killer set. Secret Keeper does if there's no secrets. If I, I can play Secret Keeper now, or I can Hero Power. I'll try with the Secret Keeper, because there is a chance that I roll Leok from the Animal Companion. Which would then give the Secret Keeper a chunk of good attack power. There's the Leok. I think I want to kill the Spider Bomb. Because there is the risk that he is able to activate the Death Rattle of the Spider Bomb multiple times. And I don't want that to happen because it would, of course, destroy my board. Okay, can I top deck a secret, please? Top deck secret would be so good with double spell stones in hand. Also, it would grow the secret keeper. Yes. This is what I'm talking about. 
The stock deck secret is exactly what I'm talking about here. He still has the two cards he kept and I think he would keep a mind control tech. So that's definitely a risk there. There could be a mind control tech coming. So then I can choose between going for the wolves or not going for the wolves. I suppose I still go for the wolves, right? MC tech picks off one of them. Can't play double MC tech yet. And if he has Grizzly, I need power to push through that. Alternatively, I can play Freezing Trap and Hero Power, which means that he still can't use the Candle Shot to kill the Secret Keeper. And his Keleset would be bounced back. But then if he plays the Grizzly... Well, he can't play the Grizzly because I have the Cobra. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 damage. I don't have to play a spell stone. I can I can do freezing trap. I can do freezing trap and face. Yes, I can do this. This is acceptable. Because Keleset cannot connect. So no easy kill on the Cobra, which means that he can't play the Grizzly. And then that means that he dies, so I don't take any additional risks by playing the Spellstone. In this particular scenario, I was actually playing this like a tempo deck now. Raise a more, but no beast to adapt. Secret Keeper, no secrets. I think I ditched the Raise a more, and I keep the Secret Keeper. I'm more likely to pick up Secret for turn two than I am to pick up a beast to make the Raise a more better. And by mulliganing everything, I make it more likely that I can find the secret. It's decent, cut me to number one. Um, it, well, it always depends on meta and your luck with the matchups, really. You can in in game like Hearthstone, you can't really get to number one without having good luck with the matchups. That's always the case, and we just need to accept that Hearthstone is that kind of a game. So this is probably a Deathrattle Hunter again. Does he have something to answer this? He does. A Hunter's Mark. But I still get the Venom Strike Trap out there. And it's another two turns before he can flanking strike this, so it seems fine. Now the question is do I want to do tracking here? Because tracking is an option. Another option is just to play Diamond and Steady Shot. And I would have the Houndmaster continuation to that on four. And I think that's fine. I'll go for the I'll go for this line of play over playing a tracking here. Next turn Houndmaster. Houndmaster probably on this one. Well, now it's going to depend really. Do I take one guaranteed damage? No. I'll gamble. One damage. I don't think one damage is going to be that important right here. So we'll we'll take the gamble. If this one kills the Emperor Cobra, then I get two more damage this turn. And if it didn't kill the Emperor Cobra, then I would Houndmast the Emperor Cobra. Although then it would be vulnerable to flanking strike, so... Upsides and downsides. Next turn it looks like it's going to be a tracking turn. Looking for a spell stone, maybe. Some other tools that could be useful too. Now this could be good with a candle shot. Flanking strike candle shot this one, that would be such a sweet turn. It's time for me to track a little bit. Let's see what I can pick up. Lots of lovely things here. That's really lots of lovely things. I still have plenty of secrets in the deck. I could pull all of them with the subject 9 next turn. But how do I win this game the best? Because I could do Animal Companion this turn. I could also do Venom Strike Trap. I could do Houndmaster Shaw this turn. I think I'm going for the Shaw here. My 
Let's try show and push face. I had the Venom Strike Trap Hero power as an option. Because now the show is so scary. That's obviously a pretty good answer. Houndmaster, this will have 5 attack. It's still not great. I think this is going to be fine. Houndmaster on this one. Houndmasters and Shaw will hit that one down. This one goes face. Down to 9. I put him down to seven. Seven or Venom Strike. We'll do Venom Strike. Let's try this approach. But let's just look for the one drop. I don't necessarily find the mole. I don't necessarily find a one drop. I don't necessarily find a secret that would prevent him from hitting me in the face. Uh oh, that means that I'm in trouble. Time to track for something. What can I find? There's a secret keeper. There's subject 9. But I can't get the secret keeper on the board very easily either. Secret keeper on 2, it just dies. It has to be the secret keeper. Could I maybe be in the subject 9? That would pick up the explosive trap. Nah, no, maybe that was wrong. I don't know, I just felt like this was such a weak opener that I didn't figure... I couldn't figure out what, what I could really do. Hmm. And there's that. Well, there's the mole. There's a mossy horror. So I have options. I'll try with them all. Let's see. I don't know. I could have taken the Subject 9 Mossy Horror route, which would have led to some mid game power potentially. But everything was very risky. No matter what I choose. So now I can get the Secret Keeper out there. I can get it buffed once. And I have a chance to get another minion out there. Which then might be able to give me a Houndmaster target. Or not. Because he can kill both beasts if he wants. Now he has to choose. He chooses to kill just one beast. Okay. Well, I could Houndmaster this. Or I could play the bow. If I play the bow, this will be at one health. I won't get a Houndmaster target, I have to Houndmaster now. Yeah, I have to try this now. Obviously he has enough on the board to kill the Cobra. So this looks extremely bleak. Does he freeze my face? Doesn't freeze my face. That's a surprise decision. He's preparing for a level up play though. Level up will be a level up will be lights out, right? Almost guaranteed. I have to try with this and kill off one of these tokens, but hi Matsuki. Good to see you. How are you doing? That's the level up play that I was afraid of. Well, two dogs can survive. Okay. I can kill one of them with the bow here. I can get three wolves on the board. Have to try with this. Have to. The light protects me. I could have tried the snipe, but I didn't think that would be strong enough. Okay. I'm 
good tanks. Trying to play Hunter. Not doing too well. Time to adapt. Divine Shield sounds like a plan. Divine Shield this. So this is Divine Shield. And I will kill this one. I'm, I'm just protecting my board, right? So I hit here. And I kill command that one down. This one goes here, this one goes face and I play snipe. And then we still need a miracle. Like your pally deck. Yeah, Paladin was great, and it was a lot of fun. It's m much better deck, I think, than the Secret Hunter. But, gotta give this a try. Alright, we didn't get a good snipe. Got something at least. Oh no. Oh no. Not them all. He has so good cards. Okay. So I trade here, I'll trade here, I'll obviously play the show. Alright. He has a flame elemental and a top deck card. Can I survive? Oh no! Top decking, oh no, that's such a great top deck. Could he pick up a taunt minion that he can play this turn? Even if he couldn't, can he, because I'm only at 8. It's not like I have a ton of health here. That is one solid card though. Okay, I'm wiping this board and I'm making a beast. Sure, we'll take the trade. Dead stuck a Rexa time. I might be able to do this. He has a taunt minion in hand. I can create a good beast for next turn. No, not bananas. So it's bear shark with charge. Maybe it didn't have to be a bear shark with charge. All my minions have rush anyway because of sure. Oh, not Tyrion. Not Tyrion. Oh dear. Fledgling. Need the fledgling. Taunt fledgling, six mana. Why did it have to be Tyrion? Five mana. Fledgling with Blood Flame Raptor. Eight eight fledgling from the tiger. Eight mana. That's the real deal. This this is the real deal. This one pops the divine shield on Tyrion. This a day is going to hit into Tyrion. He gets the sword, obviously. But I'm also threatening potential lethal here, if he can't find taunts. He needs to find a taunt. Can he find a taunt? No, he couldn't find a taunt. I won! I won! I think I'll take these. Even explosive trap can be useful against something like an even shaman. Not so much against Shudderwook though. We have turned our curse into our it's even. It's not always that good against even shaman either. It really depends on what kind of what kind of board he's going to be able to develop right there. Alright. Healing Totem has some potential. Mole time. Then what about his two drop? I can deal with the primal fin totem. It's not going to take over the board. I can barely deal with an earthen might too. Only barely though. 
multiple ways for me to try this. I can of course coin the bow and then use the bow and the diamo to kill the healing totem. Then I will have no board. He goes to turn 3, he plays a 2 drop and totem. That's a bit of a problem. I can try the animal companion. It's a little bit more risky, but I'll give it a try. Leok is the only bad one. I end up grabbing Leok. What do you know? Misha was good here, Hafa was good here. It was 66% for this to be good, and for this to give me more board presence than I could get otherwise. So I felt like this was this was my best chance, because that 66% was just so important. But turns out it didn't go quite as nicely as I had hoped. Kill that. And I want to take a hit on the flame tongue totem here. Make it more vulnerable to explosive drop unless he rolls another healing totem. But he might just also choose not to attack. Perfectly valid choice. I don't think he's going to attack, and I think I lost the game. He has no reason to attack. Okay, that gives me at least a little bit of hope. Because of the spell stone coming. He can of course play fire elemental next turn to kill one of them and then have some other stuff. Alright. Time for me to play the spell stone and kill one of these minions. Now let's say he has a fire elemental. That would be very, very solid. Or another flame dunk totem or something. Many good things he can have here. If he whiffs this turn on the other hand, I have Houndmaster and Razor more in hand. He doesn't whiff a turn. Whiffing a turn is not something he is doing. Yeah, whiffing a turn is not part of his... Yeah, whiffing a turn is not something he's doing. Yeah, that's just happened. <laughs> that was crazy. But he doesn't have the position. He just smacks. I don't think I have outs. I think I can try with this. It's more likely to be Shudder Rock than Even Shaman, right? Explosive Trap is only good against Even Shaman, whereas Snipe can be good against Shudder Rock. I think it's more likely to be Shudder Rock. I want to get my wolves out. Get the snipe out there, then we get the freezing dragon, but then we coin the wolves. And then we see what happens. Yep, that's a combo shadow walk, alright. No one else plays these cards. So time to get the freezing trap going. And I can play the diamond. I want health on the board. Even though there won't be enough health to counter a volcano. Because this would be this would be 15 health, 16, 17 health. Well, it's actually exactly enough against volcano. But he could also just have a lightning strike. And with the rat of air totem out here, lightning storm. With the rat of air totem here, that means that he could actually use it. So what I need to do actually is kill this one to play around lightning storm. This is the only way I can. Make it so the lightning storm doesn't do things. There's a glacial shard, yeah. And he wants to grumble this back into his hand next turn if at all possible. And I really don't want him to be grumbling them back into the hand. 
which means that I'm playing Mossy Horror over here. I would rather use Mossy Horror to kill an Acolyte to deny card draw, but I need to do this one now and then go for the Spellstone. Will he volcanoes this board? I still need to go for the Spellstone. He could do another volcano next turn though. What if he has double volcano? He has just enough mana to volcano again. If I try to play around that, do I win the game? Because if I don't play enough stuff, he doesn't play volcano, he develops board presence. Yeah, I will have to. This is the this is the line that gives has potential to win. This is an exactly volcanoable board, and he has exactly enough mana to play a volcano, but he just spent one. So does he have a second one in hand? I mean, if he had, it would be a snap play here. He doesn't. He's trying to roll the spell power to get a better lightning storm out. Four out of five. Oh boy. That was something. Four out of five high rolls with the lightning storm. <laughs> Hearthstone. Does he have something more? Because he still needs something. And if this drew Grumble and not another Glacial Shard, then he cannot block the wolf. This is not enough. If there, these ones go face, of course. I'll play the show. Dull hero power. And which secret do I play? It doesn't really matter. Neither of the secrets is. He's not going to trigger either of the secrets anyway. This is what I need to do. Can I get enough done? You could have faked freezing if you were fast. No, that I mean you're not you're not making any sense. That was just I mean I have two secrets in hand, so what's the point? I think I was plenty fast enough. Oh no, he has healing. Well, he didn't have healing, because you would always heal here. But he does have a Hex. Well, this is a beast now. The upsides to it being a beast. Oh, but maybe he's able to pick up healing now. Okay. As I said, there are upsides to it being a beast. Now he has to draw healing. But he got a bunch of draws. And some random shaman spells too. And he has Electra in hand, so if he has healing rain, he wins. If he doesn't, he loses. There are still 12 cards, 12 cards left in the deck. It's very much possible that there are no healing rains in hand. As he didn't spend any last turn. It really looks like he's looking. Pow! Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more.